Hi, I am Dave. I am here at the building of the of a former employer of mine. I might say their name, but I'll ask first. Uh, but I'm here to pick up some retired computers and recondition them for use by people who need computers. Oh, I'm doing all right. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing okay. You're not wearing a tie. I know. You I'm not me either. On the wrong but... day. So I got stuff here for you back here. Okay, well, let's take a look. You mind if I say the company name? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, the company I used to work for, uh, it's called uh, A Couple of Gurus. Uh, they are what is known as a value-added reseller, which, I don't know, sounds a little too markety for me. So I just generally would have said uh, outsourced IT company. Uh, and that's a company that, if you don't have your own IT department, uh, or even if you do, uh, basically acts as or as a supplement to your IT department. Okay. Got a couple older desktops for you. They might just you might just part them out. I don't know. Okay. I, I haven't. I haven't checked them out, so I don't, I don't know the status. That's okay. That's what I'm doing. Uh, there are. There's actually five laptops in here. Wow, okay. Um, three of them have power supplies, missing two power supplies for the other, so... Okay, are any uh, of them, any of the ones missing power supplies, HPs? No, the two are, uh, that are missing is, is the two Dells. Oh, that's okay. Um, Those are cheap enough. But, you know, check them out. Uh, uh, I looked, I just can't, can't find them. Um, oh. But, uh, and we may not have received them. We, we may not have received them. We may have just gotten the laptops, actually, on those two. Uh, but, you know, do, do what you can with them, refurbish them, and uh, put them into some good, caring hands. Yeah, I mean, I know at least one person, um, and I won't go into the details, but uh, we'll find a, a laptop very useful. Yeah. Um, and I can always find other people, or worst case, uh, give them to a thrift shop. Yeah. So... I'll go ahead and carry these down. Cool. And... Okay, well, let's take a closer look at the laptops now that I brought them home. Uh, there were two desktops, however, uh, upon closer inspection, they were both older than Windows 7, and neither of them had a product uh, key sticker on them, which meant there's basically no way I could license them, so I went ahead and left those behind. Now, these two computers are both uh, HP EliteBook uh, 8570Ps. So they're, as far as I can tell, the winners. Um, they both have Windows 8, which also means that they've got uh, the ability, they've got their products keys uh, in the BIOS of the system themselves. Um, so I can just go ahead and use uh, Windows 10 installation media and it'll automatically pick up the license that comes with it. Uh, that is also the case for this Toshiba satellite and it is a model uh, C855D-S5100. Um, seems to have pretty good specs as well. Uh, and these are the three that also definitely have the power supplies on them. That uh, scary Emmett clown painting belongs to my landlord, by the way. Uh, then we've got two older, both Dell PCs. Uh, this one is an E6430. Uh, does come with Windows 7. I don't know if it has got an in BIOS uh, key. I will have to check that. Uh, if that is not the case, I may need to try to rescue it because I do not see a product key on the outside. On uh, this one, uh, which I did not realize at the time I took it, uh, is an older Dell uh, 630. Um, it's got, as you can see, came with Windows XP. I uh, don't see a key on it anywhere, but I also wouldn't, at this point in time, install Windows XP on a system that, uh, going out to someone, uh, I may do something like try loading Linux on it. Uh, but the two Dells also appear to be the ones that didn't come with power supplies. They're 
a little less of a concern right now. Okay, as you can see, I have booted up one of the Elite books here. And let's take a closer look. It's got the uh, Core i5 3, 3320M. Uh, not too bad. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM. It's not fantastic. It's not terrible. Uh, from the specs we have here, we can also tell that it does have Bluetooth, which is always good. So, I'm now going to reboot it. And as you may be able to tell, I've got a tiny little flash drive in there right now. I am going to boot off that flash drive. I'm booting a program called uh, Derek's Boot and Nuke. Now this is not necessarily something I would do with every computer, but these particular computers do happen to be computers that are formerly from a business, so I want to wipe them uh, clean. And this is a software you can download for free and burn it to either a CD or a uh, USB flash drive. And what it does is it'll give you several different options. And what it'll do is erase the hard drive and then overwrite it several times. And that will keep any data that was previously on the system from being recoverable. Okay, so obviously we do not want to wipe the drive that we just booted off of. All right, method. Now let's go ahead and use the DoD short method here. And now this will take a while, but basically it's gonna take the hard drive and just completely overwrite it and overwrite it again a number of times and Make sure that even if somebody uses uh, at least moderately advanced uh, recovery tools that uh, they can't get any of the data that used to be on the computer. And there we go. This will take a while. Now, while this is running D-Ban, just want to show you a neat little feature here on the Elite Book. Uh, right up here, next to the camera, you've got a button you can press that'll pop out a little LED light. Now, you can't really see this because it's pretty light right now, but that'll illuminate the keyboard if you are in the dark. Okay, well, there's my beautiful shiny dome, shiny forehead. Uh, while that one is D-Banning, I'm going to go ahead and take a look and get a better idea of the specs of this Toshiba. So, AMD E3, uh, 1.3, not that powerful, only about uh, 4 gigs of memory. I may actually have more memory that's compatible, because uh, it is an older laptop. Uh, but, yeah. Still seems like it'll be uh, adequate. Uh, I should look up the specs on the AMD E300 uh, processors. Okay, as we can see here, the disk has been successfully overwritten. Uh, so, no data that wasn't there it will easily be recoverable. Now, that being said, uh, theoretically, someone could go through very expensive disk reconstruction and possibly get some data. Um, but that's really not going to be an issue because, like I said, very expensive. And it's the sort of thing you might only do on a system that uh, would go to, you know, or a system that would come from financial institution or something with very sensitive data. which point, what you would probably do is actually shred and I, I do mean physically shred the hard drive from the computer, and then if you're going to reuse it elsewhere, you would just uh, buy a new hard drive. Okay, so after an outtake where I could not get the system to boot off the USB, I did a little swapping around. I grabbed a different USB stick, 
and I did notice when I was uh, checking around in the BIOS for options that this particular system does have a BIOS option to securely erase the hard drives. Um, but not all systems are going to have this. Uh, so using D-Band before was still a good choice. I have noticed in the past, and I didn't think it would still be a problem, but uh, I, I found using a USB 3 disc uh, when installing Windows 7 was kind of a problem just because what it would do is get to a certain point, realize it was USB 3, and then realize it didn't have the drivers in the boot media. Um, which doesn't seem to be the case here. It wouldn't even boot at all before. So some USB drives, I guess, just don't want to work. Uh, but I've got my trusty Micro Center one, which, as I mentioned earlier, I already had that version of Windows downloaded. Uh, I found that. This is going in and out. I do not know why. But let's go ahead and install Windows. We'll just go through some of the first steps here. Uh, installing Windows is fairly straightforward and not, not even the bulk of this. So yeah, uh, English, United States, install now. Now if I hadn't just uh, erased the hard drive, it would be getting us an option fairly soon where we'd see the hard drive and we could uh, delete it or repartition it, but since it's already been wiped, it shouldn't do that. Okay, it's asking me to activate Windows, but that is not the case, and I'm talking too loud and possibly waking my roommates. Uh, I should pick it up later. I thought it would have picked it up already, but that's okay. We'll uh, go with Windows uh, 10 Pro because that is the version it should be able to pull from the BIOS from the Windows 8 key. And just go with yes, I accept the agreement that I've read once or twice in my life. Okay, and that's it. It'll run for a while. Okay, so I've gone through setup here. Uh, for the most part, uh, most of these settings are fairly straightforward. Um, however, this is personal preference, but uh, when setting up the computer, I like to make sure the advertising ID is off, because, you know, I don't want you to tailor ads to me. Uh, same with tailored experiences. I have everything else uh, on yes. Um, and I will go ahead and accept and finish this up. Okay, now also in the setup, I'm not too wild about uh, setting up Cortana. I don't really use it. Everyone likes to come out with their own version of the digital assistant and, well, frankly, I just don't care for most of what they do. Uh, but that can be done later, and actually Microsoft will kind of pester you. Uh, I'm sorry. In my opinion, Microsoft Windows will kind of pester you to use their products like Cortana um, and the Edge browser. Uh, even when, in my opinion, in my case, I never want to. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, I am now on one of the uh, HP EliteBook uh, 8570Ps, and I've more or less just got it past set up. I did put uh, OBS Studio on there, which I wouldn't normally do, but obviously I'm capturing this. So, first thing I will do... is 
check the status of updates. Now, generally what I'll do is I'll go into advanced options and I will turn this on. That's useful when it does turn on. Uh, useful, uh, particularly if you have Microsoft Office on here, it'll also update Office or other programs. I also like to get a notification when the computer gets a restart. I go down to delivery optimization. Uh, that is good. What that does is if you have more than one computer, it'll download the updates in one and then potentially pull it from another one. Uh, then I also like to go into optional updates. Uh, I'm glad they seem to have changed this for a while. They were just uh, having driver updates apply automatically, uh, which I don't always like because I have seen driver updates cause pro I have seen unprompted driver updates cause problems more often than they fix them. Usually, when a driver update fixes something, it's uh, fairly early or it's something that you have researched and know that it's the driver and also I will say while keeping various things like display drivers up to date is important particularly if you're gaming a lot of places will use that as an early troubleshooting like yeah, I don't know what's going on let's update the drivers uh, step uh, and I have very rarely seen the driver cause a problem. Now, one of the reasons I do like uh, installing fresh, w wiping a system installing fresh, well, there are three good reasons. One, uh, that way any viruses, other problems uh, are taken care of. Uh, those are often configuration, like too much stuff, or, or infections can be the main thing that will slow down a computer. Uh, two, obviously privacy. If it's my own computer or a computer I've gotten from someone else, I don't want files or licensed software that uh, doesn't come with the laptop to go with it. Uh, just say you pick up a laptop from somewhere and it's got a copy of Microsoft Office, even though even though if you've got the copy, it doesn't mean you own it. Uh, could be the volume license. Uh, sometimes you will get a license that comes with the device, in which case you should also have a COA. Um, but in this particular case, I'm going to be installing a different Office alternative. Uh, let's go ahead and let all that stuff download. It's asking me to restart. I'm not going to restart just yet. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up Microsoft Edge here, and then we are going to use Microsoft Edge for its most uh, prolific uh, and, and useful feature, which is searching and downloading Chrome. And see, Microsoft recommends you keep using this browser. Well, I don't like this browser, Microsoft. I'm sorry. Do not care for it. Uh, I was a big Firefox advocate uh, for a while there. Uh, I've just found I like Chrome better. Uh, I will still use Firefox uh, on my own personal desktop computer. I have both Firefox and Chrome installed, and... I will use Firefox when I get to a page that I don't feel like turning off the ad blocking for, but I need to get through it to. But companies like Microsoft, and of course this is just going to be my own conjecture, my own opinion, but uh, companies like Microsoft will basically push their own browser, because within their own browser it kind of pushes their own search engine, which uh, helps their ad revenue, but I really don't care. Okay, my download did not start, which, yeah, 
I'll go ahead and start it manually. And like I have said before, my internet connection is not fantastic. Okay, while well, that is downloading, let's generally I kind of prefer the offline installers for anything. Plus, and this is something I do, it may or may not be ideal, but I certainly don't think it hurts when I've got a 64-bit system. I will download both 32 and 64-bit Java. So I'll go to all Java downloads here. I'm showing you the downloading these. I actually already have uh, them all downloaded in a folder on my main PC. So when I'm doing another computer, I will often just grab a zip drive. Okay. We've got Java, we've got that. Uh, uh, first of all, let's go with it because that one is finished. PZIP is a compression program that uh, allows you to zip and unzip files, which Windows can do natively, but it also can allow you to access other types of files that Windows doesn't handle, uh, such as uh, RER files or uh, decompress an ISO image. So we'll go with the standard installation. Leave it on English. Have it uh, associated itself with all these sorts of types of uh, compressed files. And there we go. That's PZIP. Uh, next we'll go with CD Burner XP because CD Burner XP. CD Burner XP is a CD Burner XP is another program I install by default when I've got a system that's got uh, some sort of a burner drive. Don't always install it just because uh, sometimes you will get systems these days that don't even have uh, a DVD or a CD drive. But this has a lot of the features uh, you would have found in the OEM versions of CD burning software that would come with systems. Uh, to me it's got a little less bloat to it. And there are some built-in Windows features, but this just allows you uh, more control, um, more ability to create different types of CDs. So I like to have it uh, available, and I like to have it available for people when I give them computers. don't really need the extra languages for all users. Go ahead and tell it to yes, associate ISO files. Okay, that is good. In previous versions, well, no, I'm, I'm not even sure, but sometimes software will try to sideload something where they'll get a little uh, extra money. I, I mean, I guess I respect that they're doing it so they can keep providing their software for free, but I really hate um, the sort of programs that tend to get bundled with other program installers. They're not programs I would usually want. We do not need to launch that, so let's go ahead and finish. Alright, now, everything else is either continuing to download or is the sort of program that uh, 
it's just downloaded an installer that then downloads a bigger file. And I do have stuff downloading, so I'm going to go ahead and pause again. Okay, since the last time I was uh, in here, uh, OBS freaked out a bit uh, when the display driver got installed, which is fine. Uh, fortunately, the video that I had recorded uh, was saved, so you get to hear that in all its echoey glory. Uh, but also everything uh, finished downloading, I did reboot. So let's go ahead and continue. Let's install LibreOffice. Uh, so, uh, LibreOffice is a free open source uh, office program uh, that is able to install in and basically does many of the things that Microsoft Office can do. Okay, I'm not going to worry about adding additional Uh, settings. I won't worry about uh, ActiveX controls because those are Internet Explorer and they don't even go over to uh, Edge. So, those settings all look good. Oops. Twitchy finger. Set it as the default for everything as there is no version of Office on here. There is um, WordPad, but I prefer it opened Office to Office Documents by default, or Word Documents by default. I do not care for programs that load themselves at start when they're not needed, so I'll leave that off. And. This program will basically take over for uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, it is okay. Uh, I don't normally use OBS while installing this, so I guess we'll just go ahead and make it force to do a reboot. Okay. I am going to go ahead and reboot right now because there are a few settings changes I want to make in LibreOffice, so we'll be right back. Okay, so I'll just adjust that. Okay, so now I've rebooted, I'm going to open up LibreOffice and I'm just going to make a couple of changes here to make it a little more transparent. I'm always going to have it I'm going to have it set so it uh, by default saves uh, text documents as Word documents. Okay, and spreadsheets will always be saved as Excel. I'm not too worried about the other settings, although I'll also set... nope, never mind. Okay, those settings are that way. Uh, just a little extra layer of transparency to the end user so that uh, when they save their documents they're openable on whatever work computer it might be. Um, Let's go ahead now, and there is uh, off 
offline version of the help uh, for LibreOffice. I'm just going to go ahead and install as well. So, okay. Uh, next, I will install the combined community codec pack. Uh, I am familiar with this, so I'm not too worried that we can't reach a smart screen filter. Almost always just put the uh, default settings on this. I'm not worried about the settings application. Just uh, reset all the default settings. And uh, these codecs, uh, when they're installed, they'll work in you know Windows Media Player or Groove, uh, and they will work in anything else that decodes them. It just means they're available for programs to use to decode uh, the video files or the audio files so that they will play on this computer so it knows the various types of formats. So next I install Java once again, smart screen, that's fine. Okay, default folders. Next, okay, and like I said before, it may not be necessary, but I like to have both versions of the runtimes on there. Uh, to install Chrome. Now I would uh, usually install Chrome very first thing because then I would use that for all the other browsing, but I didn't install it first thing because I was downloading so many other things. And this Chrome installer that I have downloaded is just an uh, installer that pulls it down from the internet. Now I do like uh, actually locating and installing the full installer. I just didn't happen to do that this time. Uh, but if there is a program that uh, has either a download installer like this where it's just uh, kind of a stub that then downloads the rest of it or you can just download the entire program, I would prefer to download the entire program and then using it uh, like we see right here, the download failed. Uh, the internet, for some reason, keeps saying it's cut in and out. I'm going to go ahead and pause this and get a different copy of the program. Okay, so I've uh, gone ahead and copied off of my computer because the internet downloads are acting a little funky on me at the moment. Um, uh, copied the standalone uh, installer for Google Chrome. It's a bit older. Uh, as you can see, it was uh, downloaded in October of last year, but I'm not too worried about that. I just want to get the base program in there, and then Chrome does a pretty good job of updating itself. Okay, installer went uh, just fine. Now I want it, it's probably going to say it uh, requires an update, but I'm not too worried about that. Just I'm not going to bother customizing it uh, right here. Obviously, I have signed in with my Google account on Chrome on computers I use, and That also allows it to synchronize across my phone. I am also going to pull the Adobe Acro Reader uh, full install version. As you can see, as opposed to this, which is uh, just a little over a megabyte. And this, that is 
megabytes, uh, about 173 megabytes, uh, quite a bit different there. Now, if you're installing, you probably, in particular if you have a better internet connection than I do, you probably don't really need to worry about it too bad. Um, but I find particularly when working with multiple computers, and often when I get one computer, I get several computers, uh, it's just better to do the full download and then copy it. So, here we go. Pretty straightforward. Install it. Um, I don't even think I'll bother launching it, so that way I will keep intact the uh, message where you have to agree to the license agreement. I don't think it's such a big deal, just because... I am not selling this. I'm uh, giving it away, or sometimes I will donate them um, at a thrift shop. But, yeah, I mean, there are various things. Like, you open Adobe Reader uh, first time, it's going to ask you to agree to their license agreement. So, it's good to leave that intact for the end user. Uh, above and beyond that, um, we'll mention, uh, I'm not going to mention the specific uh, program, but a lot of OEMs will install another PDF reader program that um, ends up A, not working particularly well, and B, keeps trying to get you to buy an upgrade to it uh, just to unlock features that you get through the free uh, Acrobat Reader, or Adobe Reader rather. So, I always like to make sure that's installed and I always like to uninstall uh, that extra program. Uh, now when I worked for the uh, sort of crummy OEM, the company that would build the PCs, um, they would do is someone back in the office um, in Minnesota here would get the hardware, configure it, and then create a base image which they would load onto these computers. However, in all actuality, they would reload well, they wouldn't reload the image, but they they would add additional programs, um, little things where you know they'd probably get an ex little like small amount of change if somebody actually used them and signed up or something. Before we knew the term spyware, even, but it would end up putting a lot of. Uh, packages on there, um, and then they'd get chewed out about it, and then they'd, oh, we, we'll stop doing that, and then, of course, they would do it again in the future. And a lot of OEMs will, OEM, original equipment manufacturer, will put programs of questionable value, either to make it seem like they've got all, all this great software that isn't that great uh, preloaded on their computers, or they will also uh, take and put on stuff that they will probably get a small uh, kickback on. It's not significant, but it happens. For the most part, um, well, a lot of original equipment manufacturers will also put in their own versions of software that will do the same things the operating system does, sometimes worse or just in a completely different way. Not so fond of that. Uh, it's one reason. Uh, uh, it's one of the reasons I like doing these fresh, clean installs directly from just the downloaded Microsoft Media. Uh, even though, arguably, I have the same feeling about uh, some of the default Microsoft programs, but it's not nearly so egregious and, well, I, I don't want to say anything to get myself in trouble, so let's not worry about that. 
Let's, uh, let's go ahead and with the next one. I think I may be getting close to done. So I've installed LibreOffice, installed the codex, installed uh, 32N 64-bit Java. I've installed PZIP, uh, CD Burner, and Adobe Reader, and Chrome, and the Visual C redistribu redistributable. I had to install before installing OBS Studio just so I could capture this and you could get this wonderful high quality professional droning in my lowest voice. Uh, uh, I swear I don't always talk like this, but uh, when it tends to be sort of dry, I guess I, I do. Anyways, I made the tweaks I want to. Uh, the system has not fully patched itself, but uh, it's just pretty much keep checking the updates, keep rebooting until it says there are no no more. And that's the same network problems we've been seeing. I've got another computer in another room also loading updates. That's probably what's causing me the problems. But that is pretty much getting this computer ready to go. So, I think that will do it. Uh, go ahead and stop the recording here.